Hello and welcome to the V-Ray 3 for Rhino 6 tutorial on interior lighting. Um, so this tutorial is going to cover three different ways of creating interior lighting and um, this tutorial is more to create interior lighting for exterior renderings. And so what I mean by that is getting some lighting within your building so that when you're rendering it, it doesn't come out like this. So this is sort of where we've been in our previous tutorials dealing with lighting. Um, I've gone ahead and turned back on the material override so I can only really see the glass and the materials because again, I'm only concerned with lighting. Um, I'm not too interested in the details of my wood sidewall or any metals or anything here. Um, but what we see here is a typical result where our lighting looks correct for a sort of sunset dusk setting um, and we're seeing a beautiful reflection of our HDRI but we can't see within the building at all and that's because there's no lights in the building and it's just dark. So what we want to do is get some light in there and so that we can get some depth and so this is sort of to reflect the magic hour um, and sort of dusk lighting which is ideal is one of the best times to photograph architecture for um, two reasons. You want to be able to um, have it be dark enough outside so that you can see within the building. As we all know, when you walk around and look at buildings during the day, um, you really just perceive the reflections on the glass. And so skyscrapers and tall cur curtain wall buildings, they just look like reflections of the sky. And then at night, you only see inside and you see all the little scattered yellow dots of various offices or apartments that have lights on, but you don't perceive the exterior facade um, and it's massing as clearly. So when you, a lot of times you see renderings at dusk and architecture photography at dusk, it's because you wanna be able to see the interior spaces and massing and get some more depth to the project, but not lose the exterior massing and the materiality of the project. So there's a really fine, window there where you can actually have both and that's kind of right at dusk. Um, so what you see here is an example of it happening where at dusk you only see the reflections and we're not seeing inside. So I'm going to look at a few different ways to get some lighting inside there. Um, and the goal of this tutorial is to show you ways to get lighting inside of there but not increase the rendering time. Um, now that we're getting into lighting and adding lights, uh, we'll find that render times will start to go up. And that's because lights themselves make the math that V-Ray is running essentially on where lights bouncing off of materials um, go up significantly. And it definitely goes up um, exponentially with the more amounts of lights you, you add. So in theory, theory, if we come in here and we see all these cam lights in the ceiling, um, to make this rendering be 100% realistic, I would put a point light in every single one of those. Um, and so it would get some nice washing out onto this wall. It would light up the space. But the reality is, is that's going to make um, this rendering take hours and hours, if not days. And that's not what we're going for here. We want to go, we want some sort of quick and easy ways that are more relevant to to not getting the most perfect render accurate, but getting something that's really, really close for significantly less time, um, both in setting up and in the render output itself. So let's first start with um, just dropping a point light in and we'll kind of talk about some of the settings with point lights and then we'll get to some other ways to sort of fake the effects of that. So I'm gonna go to my top view I'm going to um, go to my V-Ray lights uh, dropdown, and you see I have a bunch of different lights in here. I'm really only concerned with the point light tool at the moment, so I'll click on the point light tool. And in plan view, I'm just gonna click sort of in my living room here. Um, I'm gonna select that, and look in my um, elevation, see it has a way down here at the ground. I'll just move that up. And what I want this to do for this tutorial is just sort of have one point light in the middle of the living room kind of floating. And you, know, you can see it here kind of floating around. And we're just gonna play with some settings and see, see what happens to it. So if I click on that light, um, 
you can see I have some Rhino settings here, but what I'm actually interested in are my V-Ray settings. So if I come to my asset editor and go to the lighting tab, you can see I have my sun in there, which if you haven't done the um, V-Ray exterior lighting tutorial, you should um, go to that first to get your sun set up and the dome light, which is gonna be the HDRI um, that affects the entire scene. And now we have this Omni light, which is your point light in the middle here. And it defaults to an intensity of 30 and a color of light. So first of all, we know that interior light bulbs are never just solid white. They always have a little bit of a yellow um, warm warmth to them. So I'm going to just change that right away to a nice kind of soft, warm yellow. Um, I'm going to change my intensity to 10. And this is sort of to demonstrate a plan on how these work. Um, and then if I look at my decay here, this is going to be the most important um, way to think about fine-tuning your lighting. It's a little bit of a trial and error exercise depending on how big your model is, how big the spaces are, how far away you are from the lighting. Just as the way lighting works in reality, it's, it's a little difficult to fine-tune. Um, but I can kind of run you through. So the, the three options here are linear, inverse, and inverse square. So inverse square, we're going to start there, and this is going to be your smallest light. The best way to think about inverse square is it's sort of like a Christmas light, where it's really, really bright in one spot, but it falls off really fast. So in this example, you can imagine just one Christmas light floating in a room, which we know is not going to be enough to um, light up the entire room, but it will make some light. So let's just render that really quick and see what it does. So I'm going to go back to that the view I've been working with all along, my main perspective. And this is our starting point where we don't have any lighting at all. It's just sort of our exterior lighting um, with our, our material override set up. And because I'm only concerned with how the light is affecting the glass, I'm going to go ahead and just render that because this will make it go faster. So I draw my, my viewport box around my glass. This way I don't need to re-render the ground every single time. And we'll hit render, and I think we'll see that almost nothing will happen. It, if you could even notice anything, I'd be surprised. And just as I suspected, um, it looks more or less the same in here. We're not getting a sense of seeing the inside at all. We're still seeing 100% reflection. So let's go back and see what the difference that makes if we change it from inverse square to just inverse. And so inverse is more like a standard uh, light bulb. So you can imagine just one 60 watt bulb in the middle of a room um, also wouldn't be ideal lighting. If you're having a big open loft living room like, like we're working with here, you probably have a number of lights and you can obviously have a bunch of cans set up. But let's see what happens when you just have one um, inverse decay. Again, we haven't changed the intensity or the color at all. So let's come back and render that and see what that does to our scene. So right away we can see it's got a little bit brighter in here, um, but again, the reflection's winning here. It's overriding how much we want to be able to start to see some furniture and see some interior space dimensions, but you can just tell by this glass right here that we got a little bit brighter inside. So let's come back now and change that setting yet again to the linear. Again, keeping the intensity and color the same. So now we can see as this finishes up, there's a huge jump in um, luminosity. So this is completely washed out, completely bright. And that's because the linear light is works almost more like a floodlight. So the fall off is going to happen in a linear rather than like an exponential way. So it really carries for a long distance. So when you put one of those lights in here, it's so bright that we can't even see the reflection on the glass anymore. And we can see the furniture and stuff inside. There's that stair in the back and um, some chairs and stuff here, but it's actually so bright that it washed everything out. So we can't even make out anything. So now we've gone way too far in the wrong direction. Um, but we have a hint of sort of where we want to be. Um, whereas the, um, so we haven't changed the intensity and the color, but we've play, played with the decay. 
to k. So now we can see the difference of the inverse square. The inverse gets you just a little bit. The linear goes way, way too over. So let's keep the linear because it's actually getting the full sort of um, brightness to the room that we want. Again, we're not trying to, we're just trying to get this room to feel like all the lights are on by using one light rather than using a bunch of little lights. So if we were going for pure photo accuracy and we had all day to do this, we would go back to the uh, inverse lights and use those and put one in every single can and can um, light in the house. But I just want one light because I don't want this to take too long. So I'm going to use the linear option. But I'm going to drop this all the way down to one. And now let's see what that does for us. I'm actually going to render just a little bit more because I want to see how this light glows out of um, the interior to this, this porch wall. So what we can see now is we're, we're starting to get into that, that, that balance between the light on the inside and the light on the outside. Um, so when I look over here, again, this is rendered at very low quality, so it's a little bit grainy. Um, but that's just sort of for time's sake now. If, if I were, had more time, I could let this go at a very high um, uh, render quality and pixel size. But you sort of want to fine tune these things much smaller. And once you feel like you got it, then you know it's just going to, from there, it's only going to get better um, for your final rendering. So if I zoom in a little bit, I can see here is that I can start to make out some of the interior elements of, of the house. Um, I can also start to make out that stair that's sort of happening in the distance there. But I can also see my reflection, right? And so I see my reflection on the left side much stronger because it's reflecting the glass. The right side is reflecting this gray wall, so it doesn't, it's not as obvious there. But in theory, if I had my materials on, you'd see some faint reflections of the wood um, and on this side, but you'd still see the elements within there. And what works out really well is that where the trees are in the darker part of the reflection, I see into inside my unit even more clearly versus where the brighter spot. And then again, that comes to that light and darkness, well, how much or little you can see into the glass. So this is starting to get a good balance of what I want to do. My color maybe is a little green. I can play with that color to get a little warmer. But it's starting to get a good balance of what I want in there. And again, I'm only using one line, so it's not slowing me down too much. I'm not concerned with filling every can. I just want it to view as seeing both inside and outside. And you can see I'm getting kind of a nice little glow out here. But this glow is also very um, stark in the shadow blurriness. And if you remember back into our exterior lighting tutorial, we were getting that, um, that some shadow blurring to be a little bit more fuzzy. And so to fix that, we can go um, back to our shadow radius. And here, um, if you just uh, kick this up to, to about two or so, that'll give that nice uh, fuzziness to that shadow. So if I go back to my image here, um, so this, this black line is actually the light coming through and the mullion in the window is, as it projects out here, is right there. So if I were to come back and now just render where that shadow line is. We can see it's gotten a lot more created, so it feels a little bit more like a warm, um, glowing, glowingness that's coming out of uh, the unit itself. So let's we can do that again here. It's a little tighter there, and that'll be because it stays crisp right from where the shadow happens, and it gets uh, more blurry as it goes away from that object. Um, so that's one way of doing this. Um, in the next uh, tutorial, we'll talk about the second option that deals with emissive materials. Thanks.